Hey guys, this is Laurel, Laurel with the Dabbling Hook. How are you? Or I should say, how art thou? Somebody says that. I don't remember who that is. But anyway, how are you guys doing? It is a bright, sunny day. I think cold. I haven't been outside. Because for the last couple of days, it's been ferociously windy. Uh, we've had lovely warm-ish days then it gets cold then it gets brutally windy and yesterday was okay then at night the wind just came out of nowhere it's like howling almost so winter in new england um or almost spring hopefully i can't wait it's now light past like five o'clock or around five o'clock oh, i love when i finally register that it's just it feels good because yeah winter in me now. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well. Um, ooh, the heat just kicked in, so I don't know if that was loud enough, but <sighs> what are you talking about? Stuff. I have been home for a week. I am heading back uh, to Boston tomorrow for a week. So, um, video. <laughs> um, what else? I'm going to put in, um, right off the start, the winner of um, my little giveaway for the thread and the bag. And I'll be right back. So congratulations, Christy. Um, I'm pretty sure you've won from me before. Or was it a purchase? Again, mind, I don't remember. But um, she's a regular commenter, so congratulations. And um, you know the drill. Send me an email to let me know you've seen this um, and where you want me to mail that to. So thank you guys again for um, chiming in and participating and yeah. On to the yarny stuff. I am just having some regular, um, not regular, it's English breakfast tea, extra bold, because I like my tea extra bold. <laughs> and I'm resting it on a little rug mug that I had gotten from Seta. So, oh, actually, I had it upside down. There's a little label. So, I just reheated my tea for the second time, so. Just don't want to mess up the dresser. All right, what are we talking about? So, um, acquisitions. A little bit. Pardon me while I go pick that up. Okay. All right, and it's all falling apart. So, while I was in Boston two weeks ago, pardon me, um, I keep forgetting to bring my Notions pouch because when I use it here, it's on my desk and I forgot to pack it. So I needed, um, this was the second time I've forgotten, so I needed a darning needle and at my parents' house, the only thing were regular needles with a tiny head and I made it work the last time, but it killed my finger. So I decided to run to um, the local yarn store. That's about 10 minutes away, 10 minutes drive away, and there was... I couldn't find a darning needle at Target, and there was no way around where I could easily find one. Um, so there was a fabric store, but they're about the same distance away, so why not go to the yarn store <laughs> instead? So I went and I bought darning needles, and they're actually, I would have preferred ones a little smaller, but these were the bent tip ones that they had. Um, they had a, not a big selection, I think they had like two types, two or three types. Um, and one of them were plastic needles, which I didn't want. But being at the yarn store, and it's a local yarn store, you can't just walk out with, you know, darning needles. Come on. It's a yarn store. <laughs> See where I'm going with that? So, um, and what I bought, I planned on using while I was in Boston, but I just never got around to it. So, these are two baby alpaca skeins. Oh, my God. It's so soft. It's just, just it's so soft and I was just gonna make a hat 
and then I never got around to it so you know I figured it would feel nice if it's that soft in the hands it would feel nice so two there were I forget how many yards were actually it's in here and I don't want to pull out the little thing so I had her skein it um, or cake it up in there and it's falling apart because you know it's traveled and it's just sitting around and my hair is getting I don't know how you people with bangs do it it's just getting in my way oh the hair <laughs> I uh, did a braid out for those of you who don't know my hair was in twists and I took it out or twist out I should guess I should call it and yeah that's where it is anyway so that was my only acquisitions I think from since the last time I believe yeah um, I'm looking down at my notes so forgive the head head tilt what else um, I've been trying to clean up um, look at the camera um, and I actually got to do some sewing which felt so good it's been a while um, and I did a good amount I think the last time I'd gotten like two things sewn two pouches sewn I got a few done this week and ugh, it was felt good I'm looking at all this fabric I thought I had gotten out of and I guess I had bought a lot more fabric than <laughs> again um, so yeah I got to sew and um, I forget where I was going with that oh I'm cleaning up so I've had a ton of scrap fabrics like I watch um, Darlene Mar Machaud I think that's how you say her last name and um, she does crumb piecing and just little scraps of fabric she turns into like fabric you know into squares or what have you and I was so intrigued I got really into it that I started saving everything and it just it was getting out of control and realistically with the situation I'm in now I'm just not having time to sew and crumb piecing and putting little pieces of fabric together takes a lot of work it's a lot of a lot of sewing and cutting and ironing and you know and piecing and making sure it fits and all that it's it's a lot of work it's not just having you know a yard of fabric cutting it into what you need and then that's it no this takes this takes a bit it's fun to see it come together but it it takes a while and it was just you know if you sew you know you're gonna have a lot of scraps and yeah last year I did quite a bit of sewing and I had quite a bit of scraps of all sizes so what I decided all this rambling sorry not rambling somebody reminded me that I prattle I don't ramble <laughs> which is quite true all this prattling to say that I you know I let go of everything else around you know clutter but when it comes to my yarn and craft stuff I seem to hold on to it for whatever reason so last night I did a you know the regular plastic shopping bags was full of just the little bits I thought I would get I mean like little little bits that I was going to you know interface and then you know um, what's the word um, uh, s not stitch what is that word <sighs> quilt together I guess is whatever the word is um, on the machine to hold it together I thought I would get to that last night it hit me there's there's just no way the amount of time it takes that I would and I still have hang on it's gonna be a little noise so I got rid of a whole bunch that was at my desk and everything's falling over um, that was on my sewing desk but I still have a whole bag of bits and pieces that I need to go through um, they are what I got rid of yesterday were like I have a lot of when you cut your box corners you have a lot of these well I had a lot of oh do I have a piece oh yeah. eyelash in my eye like something like this where the frugal part of me just you never throw anything away <laughs> but while it's fun to piece this into a bigger piece of fabric oh my goodness um all right I may have to pause to get whatever is in my eye out um while it's fun to piece all these together the amount I have is just not feasible so I got rid of a whole plastic bag worth and I still have this bag to go through and what I'm gonna do and I still have a little bit on the desk that I kept um, make an effort to really put the bigger pieces together and then decide to let go of these smaller pieces and my hope is that after that once I'm done using a bunch of fabric like immediately 
um, either, you know, crumb block the little bits together or throw them away. <sighs> That's the decision. And I need to stick to it because the mess is, like I, I always say, it's getting to me, but it's really, like, it's invading my, my space. It's taking over my space. So I've been rambling, prattling for a while now. So let's get really going. So that's fabric. I'll talk about what I've sewn in a bit. Um, other acquisition, I lied. So before I left last time, I had ordered, um, beginning of February, an attachment for the um, knitting machine, because the cranking, while you want to get it out, it does a number on the arm. So I bought a small um, cordless drill, and I ordered the part hasn't even come out of the box yet, it's still sealed. I bought the part, it said it shipped I think like two or three days later, so it shipped on the 9th of February, and when I left last time was the 20th of February, the day before that I had gone to the post office, still wasn't there. Um, because the tracking showed, the last update was a day after it shipped, so it shipped on the 9th, the last update was the 10th. So I figured, okay, maybe, you know, knowing how the post office is, haven't gotten an update in a while, things are stuck, whatever, maybe it's there. Um, there have been occasions where the, the tracking wasn't updated, but my package was there. So I went to check, nothing, so I'm like, fine. So I was gone for a week, came back, thought it would be there, it wasn't there. And then finally, earlier this week, um, the tracking actually updated, you know, because I was, I was giving it time, given the postal situation, before I went back to the seller. Um, and I think it's Machine Parts is the name of the, no, Makers Parts. And I think other people have um, mentioned it before, and you're probably going to hear some of one of the minions probably looking for food. Um, so it updated, what's today, the, the 5th? It updated three days ago, um, and then it came two days ago. Yeah, no, it updated on Monday, today's Friday, and it came on Wednesday. So... I have it. I haven't even opened it yet because there's a lot going on that, you know, more important than working on craft. So it's still in there. I'm going to take it with me to Boston and hopefully give it a shot. Um, speaking of the machine, the other thing I did last time I showed um, that I was gifted the 40, um, the 40 pin. But it doesn't come with a counter, which there's no way I'm going to, as I'm cranking, I'm going to remember to count. So what I did was I purchased one on Amazon and um, I hot glued it to here. Um, I followed a couple of tutorials on YouTube. Uh, it took two of them. One of them was easier for me to read. And I said before that, you know, at one point I used to always wonder, why do so many people make tutorials about basically the same thing until it you know I had that aha moment it takes a certain way somebody presents something for it to really click with you so you have to watch many of them if it's not working the first time watch another one and another one and that's what happened I think I watched like four or five and then one of them I'm like oh I can do that and it's not like any of them were hard but it's just it wasn't gelling with me what they were doing so anyway I did that and I watched two of them that really helped. One of them just to, was easier to see what she was doing. And the other one mentioned that it comes with, you know, the the cord that you have to attach, you know, to that. And this person said they just cut it so there wasn't a lot of extra cord that you had to like, you know, zip tie or whatever out of the way. So I cut it to length and, you know, cut off the covering and then add it in. And then the inside part that I had to attach wasn't sticking. So what I did was wrap it with yarn, yarn to the rescue first, and then hot glued it in. Because you know once hot glue gets to yarn, it sticks. So right now it's sticking, hasn't moved. This part did come off between coming from Boston and here. It um, The hot glue came off. So I just added some, um, I think, crazy glue or something to it and put it back on to see if it'll hold so we'll see since I'm gonna take it with me to Boston again all right so that's that with the knitting machine and since I came home I haven't used it at all because you know life and um, 
life and other things that needed to um, that I was working on that I wanted to because my arm I cranked my arm crazy in Boston. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Um, let's see what I wrote a note. Organization still not organized. It's in progress. Um, acquisitions, um, scrap fabric, um, whips. I consider working on my scrap fabric part of my whip, so that's one. And then my scrap blanket I showed last time, I haven't done anything. I haven't touched it. So that's that, I think. Now, on to finished objects. So first finished object is sort of a two-parter and something I want to do. Oops. So I made, um, I had a little bit of um, velvet yarn I bought at Walmart. I think it's the mainstay one. I'd used it to make um, Santa hats that we end up not using. I ended up not using anyway, but they're there for next year. But um, I had a little bit of the velvet left and I'm trying not to have scraps around and I was going to put it in a blanket but I decided um, at the last minute to try to make an octo out of it. That was a pain to use this yarn. Not because the yarn is bad or anything. One, it's dark color. So the stitching was done a lot by feel and intuition. Intuition is in where I think the stitches were. Um, and because of the, the yarn and I, was, I didn't have as much to, to do all the repeats, so I modified a little. Um, so that's why his head looks more alienish than the more rounded when you stuff it kind of look because I was running out of this yarn and I wanted to make it work. I had to pull back a couple of times, um, you know, to adjust. And I don't have huge, huge eyes, but I do have uh, a bit of these left that I've had for a while, so I decided to do that. And it was hard to put a smile on his face, so I made him look kind of grumpy. And when I posted on Instagram, I took a picture outside because the snow was very much still there um, and crunchy and hard. So I said he wasn't happy that the snow, we still had snow, even though we had a few nice days and we're supposed to have a few nice days, almost getting up, I think, close to 60, which is, who knows, it's New England, it could be 60 and then snow storm the next day. So I give no credence to that. It'll just be a nice day to appreciate on that day. So that's that. So what do I want to do with this? I actually released the pattern for um, this Octo and I was trying to come up with a name and I'm like, you know, I have one other um, version I want to make. Um, will be more similar to this one. But, so I decided to just keep the name. The first one is just the TDH, the Dabbling Hook Octo. Um, so this is Octo 2. And if I do the other one, it'll be Octo 3. So, um, this one I'm not going to do a tutorial on. Um, I do have a tutorial on my regular Octo, and I think if you watch that, you will get the gist of <laughs> you'll get the gist of how to make that and be able to read the pattern and, and do the modification. So, what do I want to do? I want to have my first cow. I want to have an Octo Party cow. So. Um, the pattern for this is released. It is now at 20% off um, through Friday the 12th. So if you guys are interested, I can extend the sale for another week. Um, and like I said, there's already a tutorial for the first Octo. So this Octo Craze Cal could be this one or um, follow the tutorial for the first one and do that. Um, I had um, Crystal of Ricola's Crochet and Stuff, is that your name? I know you've changed your name a few times, so I'm sorry, um, but I'll put a link to her, her channel. Um, Angie of Ruby Baby, or Priscilla, of course. Um, oh, by the way, I think by the time you see this, she would have announced her winner, so whoever that is, congratulations. Um, and congratulations to Joyce, who uh, was the semifinalist I picked. Um, what was I saying? Oh, my testers, so, and there was an Instagrammer, uh, I, I don't think she has a, a channel, but she's a tester, prolific tester on Instagram, um, and her name is, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing it right, Odua, 
I'll put her name on. But um, they were my testers. So um, my brain just loses what I'm doing. But yeah, so this is out there. My tutorial for the regular ones out there. Uh, the written pattern is also available for purchase on both Ravelry and Etsy. So if you guys are interested, I do have, um, I don't talk about it a lot. Um, because one, because I haven't had a lot of chance to be very active on my own Facebook page or Facebook group page. Um, but if you're interested, I will have the hashtag OctoCraze, no, OctoPartyCal um, for Instagram. I'm not going to do a Ravelry group. It's just, I don't have capacity to manage yet another outlet. Um, or on um, the Facebook group page, I will figure out how to do a separate thread or album or whatever for that. Uh, so you can post directly there or do the hashtag on Instagram. So the Cal is going to go from today or whenever you see this through um, the end of March. So I hope you guys will give it a try. Amigurumi, a lot of people see it, and in the beginning I did too, you see it and you're like, oh my god, I can never make that. But if you take the pattern step by step, any pattern step by step, and just read, you know what a DC is. And if you don't, you can Google it or look on YouTube, um, you know what an SC is. It's basically that, just written in shorthand um, for most patterns. A lot of people do spell everything out. Um, it's not bad. It's not as hard to read an amigurumi. You're basically taking your stitches and, you know, expanding, contrasting. You know how to increase, decrease for the most part. Um, yeah, it's not that bad. It's fun. And it's just, it's so cool to see like a little thing created and put personality to it or what have you. So anyway, prattling. I hope you'll join. Um, get creative. Oh, that's why I mentioned the testers. Um, everybody puts their own spin on, but Angie's little eyes that she did with the, with the eyelash and, um, the lips and everything just made her so sassy and, and gave her such personality. Um, play with the faces. I mentioned before, um, everyone comments on my faces. It takes work. I would draw a circle or a number of circles and then draw faces on those circles to see which one appeals to me most and then I try to recreate it in yarn. You don't always get it on the first, second, third, fourth try. It's a lot of pulling in and stitching and pulling out. So oh, somebody just texted me and I need to go check that because I'm stealing. I'm doing a late lunch because I didn't take my regular lunch to do this so I will have to pause and go check that out. But um, yeah, Octo Party Cal, I hope you will join me and I just came up with the idea um, late last night, so I haven't posted it anywhere. So hopefully you'll join me. Give it a try. Maybe it'll be a first Amy, maybe not. I love bright colors, add, you know, different yarns to it. Just I've latteed them, I've um, velvet yarned them, I've added eyelash yarns, I think last year to some. It's just go crazy, mix colors, do whatever, join me, my first cow. So that's that. Okay, so that's the cow and the wreath of the pattern. It's out there. Um, I know a few people have bought it, so thank you so very much. I do appreciate it. Um, I am definitely not a prolific um, pattern writer. I can make things and, um, you know, make, what am I trying to say? I can make things off the, off the cuff, but to put it into words in a way that people will understand is so difficult, so much more difficult. Um, because what makes sense to you isn't going to make sense to somebody else or somebody else who may be more experienced or more adventurous can figure it out. But somebody else, you get so many questions about something that you may think is basic, but it's maybe not basic to other people. So it's, it's a really hard thing. Plus, the ideas don't come to me like that like I see pattern writers put things out like weekly multiple patterns a month not me <laughs> um, I have dry spells big dry spells and then things just 
happen. So anyway, that is Octo. Um, let's talk about some hats. Uh, where did I put them? Hang on. So <clears throat> Miss Canadian Crotchita, I think when she was doing a sweater, did you see that sweater she just had on? Awesome. One of these days I will actually get a garment done. I've mentioned that I had, I think, three different sweaters, cardigans, one knit, which I know I'm going to pull out. It's a getting pearly with it um, little sweater that I started, and it's so long ago that I don't remember where I was. I need to pull that out. But I have a couple of crochet cardigans that I started that I ran out of yarn. I tried to find um, substitutions, and it just wasn't working out. And it's a lot of scrappy, so I don't know. I think that's why it's still sitting there. But anyway, all this to say, one day I will finish or make a garment and finish it, other than that knitted one that I did. But, so she was talking about hers and the stitch that she used. I think it was the stitch she used. We are talking about something and she mentioned the stitch and I'm like, oh, I think that's what it's called. And I did a hat on the fly in 2013. I remember it was around, we were going on vacation and we were invited to a pool party from a, um, high school classmate and it was the day before we were going and it was of course pool party the kids wanted to go but the night before that a work colleague asked for a hat and it was a last minute for a little boy and I'll put a picture on the screen of the hat I did in 2013 um, I didn't have a logo back then <laughs> um, so you'll see the dabbling hook written on there um, but I did it and I've always loved it it that I don't know if it was the color combinations, the stitch, whatever. It always popped up in my mind. Um, so I recreated it because I was prompted or nudged a little. So I just redid it here. And doing the pattern all the way to the top was a challenge for me to, to keep the multiples right. And it just struck me when I was redoing it. I'm like, it doesn't have to be exact. It could be, that's the whole fun of a pattern, you know, to, to have something different and interest. It keeps it interesting. So this is just the regular increases here in double crochet and then the stitch pattern. Um, the color and the yarn, this, when I decided to redo it after being nudged, um, I pulled out my, there is such a pleasing gap in my yarn right now. <laughs> because I've been using it on the machines with my Karen Simply Soft Stash. And um, this is the last of my Vanna's Choice yarn that I've had. Not, I know they, it looked like they were getting rid of Vanna's Choice last year because it was on um, Clarence. I don't think it's in the stores anymore. And maybe they pulled it because they were revamping it a bit. I don't know, because they have new colors now. And Vanna's Choice, like Red Heart, always had awesome colors. And it was my go-to yarn for years and years. But. Um, it was definitely, it, it's not at Michael's, it's not at Joanne's anymore unless they brought it back and I haven't been in a while. Um, well, I haven't been roaming the yarn in a while. I went there a few weeks ago and I bought the roll with a tweed, which was on clearance, but that was um, on an end cap and I didn't, I didn't go roaming. Um, but these, obviously, I'm a fall color person. I mentioned it before. And um, this is uh, burgundy. This is terracotta so burgundy and terracotta and from the picture you saw this was an it was an air flap hat but I decided not to do the air flap and I just did a um I was running out of the burgundy so that's why the stripes got smaller and I had a little bit left and I was able to use it to you know alternate to do the um, the brim so this this is basically the the original but without the air flaps and the ties and then I decided to try to do it um, with the pattern starting, starting from the top. And I will say this is, a to me, a labor-intensive hat because of the stitch. You know, you're not just doing double crochet over and over. They are double crochets, but just because of the posts. It's, these are post stitches. So I decided to do it with the, um, with the air flap just to do it again. And I ran out of Vanna's Choice. This is Barley. Um, and this is brick. So you see the difference. This is the burgundy and the terracotta. So I had some terracotta left. This is brick and barley. And then I ran out. So the air flap is actually done in Red Heart um, Super Saver. I 
thing in chocolate and you can definitely feel the difference and then um, I was going to do the trim in the brick but I didn't have enough I, I came almost to the end and I didn't have enough so I took that out saved it for the straps and um, I used some paint box yarn to do this because you can see it's a little lighter so yeah there is no pattern I'm thinking about writing it up but it's the crown and keeping the pattern or some some semblance of the pattern is yeah it's a lot of work if I do it it may just be in one size I don't know but I did do it for our kids so if I do it with the the pattern from the top it'll be one size this is just the regular increases increases increase the regular increase um, to wherever you want it and then you start start the pattern as long as it's an even um, even amount and right now I am having a serious hot flash <laughs> God. oh good lord it's like being boiled from inside okay so yeah that's that everything's taking longer it feels like so those are that um, I'm working on that not sure yet what I'm gonna do with it but it was fun to revisit and to use up all my Vanish Choice stash my original Vanna's Choice stash. I know they have new colors, like I said. Um, so that's that. Um, da, da, da. There's another hat that I started. A pattern came to, well, not a stitches that I like, came to mind. And hold on, trying to get them all. And I started doing one. I actually wrote up one size that I had one person test for me. Um, so one size is out there and I'm trying if I write it up I'm only going to do two sizes like a small and medium or medium and large size um, so yeah it is hard to see the pattern one in variegated because I started in this yarn because I brought it with me to Boston two weeks ago and I just wanted it was just there and I wanted to use it up um, and it's blue enough that it's going to be for hat not hate and you definitely can't see any pattern in there because it's just variegated. You can feel texture and you know I'm all about texture. Um, visual and tactile texture. I like to see the texture meaning basically different stitches, different um, textural stitches you need to see them or I need to see them and um, feel them as well. So you can't see that but this is going to be for hat not hate. It is work bottom up which is my hat, my preference I started making top-down hats. I like um, bottom-up hats. Single crochet brim. So that's one. Then I remade it. Um, this was one of my, um, is it? No, I was going to say it was one of my Vanish Choice. It's not. This was a, I don't even remember which yarn this was. It's a bulky yarn. I had, and I don't remember what yarn it was. But. I made it slightly smaller because it was bulky. It was a number five. I don't remember what yarn it is. It was a, oh, uh, what is it? It was a yarn that my friend, British friend, brought for me when she came back from one of her trips. And I don't have the label, so I don't remember what it was. But I think it was a signature, signet? No. Mm, I don't remember. But you can definitely see texture on here, but you can't really see the stitches. And I do find I'm having difficulty, maybe it's just my eyes, seeing the stitches, but you can see the texture of the stitches on here. But there are some shells and some other stitches in here. And I love the fit of it. The large one has just a little bit of slouch, unless you have a small head, then it's a little more of a slouch. But I am, I am, uh, what's the word I prefer a bit of a slouch on my hat one because of hair and one I just I I like a slouch so that's number two you can see all the textures number three I had after I finished elephant in the room there I had um, some of the happy yarn um, this took three and a little bit of a fourth so from the fourth I had um, 
some left and you can see where I started had a little bit of that but this is it I did do something a little different here where you can see the bumpiness of the texture I did something a little different here it still has texture but it's not as bumpy I think I prefer this one to that one but there's that so that's three and the fourth one this was um, the first use of the Vanis Choice hat and then I went to use the rest of it in this so this is the um, burgundy and the brick together and this one did come out quite big <laughs> oh my gosh so but I love the feel of it the way it fits so I'm working on that one actually I love texture I love texture I love tweed and I love texture and I love instant gratification <laughs> And that's what hats. Hats are instant gratification for me. So, more to come on that one. Stitches and texture. That's what I'm calling it. Stitches and texture. And I got to use up long, very old stash, Vanna's Choice. Very old. All right. So that's that. Um, next. I did. I'm going to have to put a picture in because I left it in Boston some um, ages ago. I had, <clears throat> excuse me, made hot pads out of acrylic yarn. And they were basically two granny squares that I seamed together, added a loop. And my father uses it a lot as a trivet under his plate because he sits on the couch to eat. Um, so if it's a hot plate, he, he uses that. And since it's been washed a few times, it's... Um, thrown in a dryer it's you know acrylic it's melted a bit um, so I decided to make some in cotton and I've used up most of my regular cotton here but in Boston the Dollar Tree near there has just cotton so I've made two that I will put in pictures um, I think the picture I'm putting one was done and one was in progress at the time but I made two and I started making um, the magic hot uh, hot pad, but I haven't finished it. It's been sitting there all week. Um, so yeah, this is the I think does it have color the burgundy marl that I started. So it's all in here, and I do have <laughs> I'm dropping everything. I do have half a skein of black yarn that I used with one of the other hot pads. In case I run out of that one, I will add it to it. So that's that. Um, One of the days last week, or oh, this week, I was so busy, I got nothing done, and I just, I needed to crochet something that, that day, because there's hardly a day I don't touch, or use yarn, I touch yarn, but I don't use it, so I did a little flower, oh, yep, so it's just a little three-layered flower, I contemplated doing just a little tutorial on it, I might. I actually have it half written down what I did and if I finish writing it it'll just be you know another free pattern but there are tons of flower patterns out there so um, yeah so that oh and this was done with um, I don't think I held a double no this was done with um, loops and threads well like which is an amazingly soft yarn um, amazingly soft but it's just so thin. So thin. All right. So I said I was cranking a bit last week when I was in Boston. And boy, did I crank. All right. So you had seen that I had, I think I had shown this one last time that I had done, finished. And like I said, I'm trying to use up my Karen Simply Stuff. And the machine loves it. Um, I think I have a black, maybe like... I think I have three or four skeins left that to use up and the 40 pin um, makes baby hats so I tried um, I know Angie of Ruby Baby had shown a cross seam at the top and then maybe because I watched it another video popped up in the um, recommended videos 
showing how to do it as well. So I did that for the little hat and it's, I don't know, maybe six inches long and you can always give it a little bit of a cuff as well. It's just so adorable, so freaking adorable. There's one and two. I think one was 90 rows and the other was, no, one was 80, one was 75 or something because one is just slightly longer than the other. But they all get folded up and oh, so adorable. So those will go in my donation pile. I also had um, reds and golds are my favorite colors, like fall reds and golds. That warm, golden, mustardy, honey, yellowish colors. But I also love a good charcoal gray. So Karen Simply Soft in charcoal. So I have one that you can cuff. So this will grow with, with the kit. It stretch, you know, these stretches a lot. So you cuff it when they're smaller and as they grow, you know, you uncuff it and they've got a bit more wear. This one, obviously I made a little smaller to see how it would look. And then I tried my hand at a single layer hat, but with a double brim. Um, so not bad. I have to work on it a little, but you know, if you don't want that, and it would make a great slouchy if you uh, did it in the adult size, just single layer. So, because one of the things I notice, a lot of people say, oh, they don't wear hats only for winter, or they don't wear hats. But if you look around, especially like teenagers or younger people, you see them wearing beanies all the time. And it's usually like the slouchy ones. So I had also gotten some on clearance at Michael's. I'd gone to Michael's maybe the week before I went to Boston last time. And just to see what they had, because um, I hadn't been there regularly in a long time. And they had um, Clarence, and I feel a sneeze coming on. And they had some, the only thing, it was very bare what they had left, but they had, um, or at least what I wanted, um, Karen Marble Cakes, I think it is. So I think there was just one. I bought this, and then there were two Sorrel Cakes that I bought, which I haven't used yet. But So this was one cake. So I got three hats out of it. So one, there is, actually, I should undo them. I did varying lengths. So there you go. So there's the longest one. There is the light lavender plummy color and I think on the other side was more of a pinky color and this one I did in that um, so it's only on one side unless you want to see the seam I tried this was the first one I tried the X seam in so that gets folded to the regular size then the second one can be worn more as a beanie fitted maybe with a slight slouch it's got that at the top. I guess that's where that one ended and that one started. And then this one's like that. So yeah, three hats and then that's the shorter one, definitely a fitted one. Three hats out of one cake. That worked. I don't know if I had any extra left. I wanna say no, because I think I used it up till it was all done. All right, so that's that. And oh, I did. I had a skein of, I think I have one more too, a skein of um, jeans yarn. And this is the the darker one, I forget. Brand new, it's called, um, I think. But I love the feel of it from the machine. It's just so soft. But I think I had used the skein to a little bit of the skein for something. So it was just sitting there and I just used it till it was done. I don't remember how many, I think I was like at the one, maybe the 130. I don't remember, but yeah, I love the softness of it. So you can get a slouch or a cuffed beanie. Feels wonderful. Um, it's for hat, not hate, but I was contemplating. I just love the feel of it, keeping it. Not like I need another hat. So right now it's hat, not hate. And then I'd shown the neon yarns that I had bought last time that I blamed Carrie Penny for. Hey, Carrie. 
it's just in her background and it's just always there it's like you need yarn I don't <laughs> but I bought two skeins of um, craft smart and it's just it's so soft and lovely now because um, I wanted neon so I bought it the neon orange and the neon pink and I got four hats out of the two skeins um, so this is pink and all yellow on the inside so when you cuff it you get that or you get an all yellow hat on the other side and then I did the opposite all pink on the inside and then the neon yellow on one side and then what was left of them this one is all yellow with a little pink top so that'll go in donation and then this is all pink and I ran out so I had some I think some stitch studio yarn that I used to finish it off because I ran out so it's all pink on the other side so yeah so it depends on how high the cuff is you'll see you'll see that or it could just be worn like that so yeah my cranking arm hurt which is probably why I didn't even touch the machine the whole week I was here that and I wanted the I was waiting for this attachment to come so I can try it and it you know didn't come until too late so I think that is it for hats and such now before I talk about the bag we're gonna Ooh, I don't think I showed my um, February facetis cal I don't think I showed it last time I think I just posted the picture but I just did it as a v-stitch um, cal and this is three different yarns Karen simply soft is the um, I think it's the no I think it's the strawberry colorway um, did I use that all up I don't remember um, Karen Simply Soft. Um, the purple is as, as Isaac Mizrahi. Um, I don't remember. I want to say Broadway is the line. You know, Isaac Mizrahi is long discontinued. Um, so I had two skeins left, and that is, I think, that's the rest of that Isaac Mizrahi. I may have another one of his um, yarns. And then the jeans yarn. So I will put out a picture, put up a picture of what the inspiration photo is supposed to be. And this may be a little bright, but I think it, it works. So it's a bit, because of the Isaac Mizrahi yarn, it has like flex in it. Can you tell? And it's, you can feel it as you rub your hand in there. So I don't know how wearable it'll be, but it's done. And the cis love, I was so determined to get this done because I mentioned before, it's I don't think it's a pattern for beginners unless you are super um, adventurous. You have to know how to read charts because it's all charted and it's not just chart A, B, and C. It's three parts, three sections, and when you're done section one, when you start section two, it refers you back to section one for a portion because it's a repeat. And I believe it's in sections because it's not even so if you start with an increase you don't automatically end with an increase type of thing it's it's fudged I guess um, or adjusted to account for the stitch counts so you have to pay attention so I'll put in a video of me um, I had to rip back four rows I was I was so livid I was livid but livid at myself I'm like no no, because I was so determined to work on it to not let it become, you know, a, a UFO. And it just, and it wasn't until, you know, you don't know until you, the stitch counts were off, basically. Oh, I was so upset, so upset. But it's done, but I was going to say it's not complete, but it is complete. Basically, I did not do the third section because... 
the pattern is for fingering weight and you need to use fingering weight yarn unless you want a mammoth massive um, shawl and even then I still wouldn't recommend using a worsted because it doesn't grow down it grows more wide um, or it grows faster wide so if you do the third section it's just going to be basically this is um, a little over eight feet wide eight feet wide unblocked so can you just imagine if you were to block that how much it would grow blocking's not happening <laughs> blocking's not happening um, but even with the two I did Two, re two sections and then I added there are three different borders you can do and I added border number two to it but it is so wide like for somebody who likes to use it bandana style I think it's perfect because then you get enough wrappage but it's just it's big it's huge it's bulky and you still have a whole lot of wrappage so do not recommend worsted weight yarn um, I don't know if I would even do a, I would if you do a DK I would do a light DK I think sport and DK can be in, interchangeable sport might be slightly smaller than DK but I would do a light DK and maybe go down a hook size because it's just it's massive it's beautiful, it's happy, it's, <sighs> yep, 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 yep. I'm glad it's done, and it definitely covers you. It's just, this is a little long for me, <laughs> but it needs a shawl pin, which my cousin is dabbling, you know, she can crochet, she knits a little bit, she's not a fan, but she's dabbling in different things and right now she's playing with resin and she is, um, she showed something and I'm like, my first thought was, I think it was supposed to be a hair stick, and my first thought was, ooh, shawl pin, I want one, <laughs> I want a couple. So she's supposed to be working on that for me and that will come in handy for something like this to keep it in place. Yep, but. Uh, for spring here when it's chilly this would be perfect perfect oh <sighs> yeah I'm just thrilled that it's done and I, I had to literally make myself like it was my end of day project um, it became my you have a spare minute kind of project I wanted to get it done because the charts were killing me uh, the charts weren't like okay Here's the chart and it's a repeat of this and you can just keep going with the repeat. No, like every row was different um, in, in the sections. So yeah, it's, it's a good challenge for somebody who wants to um, dip their feet in it. And I think if somebody who doesn't do charts wants to challenge themselves, at least do it and do that first section of it. I think it would really up your... Um, your skills if you were to do it but yeah so um, lastly and this is gonna be a little over an hour people so oops. Um, lastly bags oops Ooh, avalanche oh good lord what a mess I've got bags bags oops bags 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 I did a few bags <laughs> most of them pouches which I will show in a second but these will um, because I'm going to be in Boston next week and I'm feeling jitters because I haven't eaten in a bit by the way I get low blood sugar and I can't let myself get too hungry or else I start getting the jitters and I feel like my joints are coming apart so I need to hurry up. Um, I got to sew this week, which is felt so good, like I said. So I was able to get just two, um, uh, ooh, I can 
really feel the jitters. I was able to get two uh, drawstring bags done and it's one of my favorite fabrics, if not my favorite fabric that I have to go look for more because I used what I have and I just, I didn't want to have a lot of extra small pieces so I made it as big as possible to use up as all the fabric basically. <clears throat> so, and these will get listed either next Thursday or Friday, so most likely a week from today. That way, once the listing's out, I will be home the next day if there are any sales that I can send them out. But I can't list them now because I won't be there to ship anything out, and it will be at least a week if I were to do that. So, um, one, I don't like to do that, and two, that's not good on Etsy, I think, reminds you that you haven't shipped things or something like that. I read... Um, that it goes against you if you don't ship things on time or something something but anyway either way I won't be there to do any shipping so it'll get listed next Friday Thursday at the earliest but first bag this is the um, watercolor flower fabric that I just adore and the fabric has watercolor flowers at the bottom and then as it goes up it's just just watercolor um, but no, not so many flowers, so uh, this is how the fabric has to be cut. Uh, now this is a very extra large bag, uh, 17 by 15 bags. My normal bags are 14 by 13, I believe, if I remember correctly. So, very big bag. Love it, I love it. So this one has the bulk of the flowers on both sides, and the inside has, can you see a theme? Happy theme. This reminds me of the, the happy colorway. So that's inside. The pocket is just some sparkly fabric that I had that you'll see is used again. So there's this, oh, and I am not going to hold anything for anyone. Um, I've done that in the past, and it's just, it's a lot to manage, and there are a lot of people coming at me asking for that and you know it just puts you in an awkward position so I'm not gonna hold anything for anyone it'll just be there listed um, next Friday so there's that one so it's just two drawstring bags and same size and this one now this is how the the fabric goes so the the flowers and then it just goes into the the watercolor of that one and it's got the same on the inside with the pocket and it's a large pocket that has one slot for a pen or a hook or what have you okay and then I did some scrap pouches but I will show that last hold on so out of that what was left out of that fabric I was able to get two small pouches one two and I believe, did I use the same fabric in both inside? Oh my gosh, I need to hurry up. The jitters, yep, they both have the happy fabric on the inside. So, those are the notions pouches, the large notions pouches, blah, 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 large notions pouches or small sock bag, you know. There you go. And then I have, I think I showed one of these last time, but, and, I want to say that they're all the same, or maybe two of them are. Ooh, I need sugar. I have <clears throat> three of the Sewing Notions bags, pouches, and they're all the same. They have the glittery in the inside. Purple. So there are three of those pouches. And then, oops, dropping things again. <laughs> all right. So I have this fabric, which is um, the unicorns on the purple background. This is fabric I said I'd bought to make my niece something. It was either Christmas or her birthday. I don't recall. And, oh my God. Let me tell you, it is about three hours later. And I'm being disturbed. <sighs> I was almost in tears because... Um, I forgot about that my phone 
was low on storage and I had deleted a bunch of stuff that before I was only able to record about two minutes at a time but now let me get all the way to an hour and then it just blinked and I'm like <sighs> there was few choice words that came out of my mouth and I just spent two hours like watching videos and googling is the video really gone because I, I, I refuse to believe that an hour's worth of videos and you're hearing Minion eating chips over there um, so it's there I had to de dig deep into the recesses of the phone folders I didn't know existed and I found it oh my god oh my god oh my god and most of the videos I saw said that they found a video but it didn't um wasn't able to play but <sighs> it was in a pending status that's why it wasn't showing up in the usual photo um camera album or anything oh my god I was dreading having to do a whole hour again of recording especially since I'm going to Boston tomorrow so <sighs> it's good plus our instant pot air fryer thing came today um, we had a mishap with the last one and we, we won't go into it needless to say I have minions um, but the new one with this which is the uh, pressure cooker and the the air fryer anyway all right things are good things are good I'm prattling I left off with showing you the last of the bags oh <gasps> so happy right now I'm so happy right now oh, the video I found the video and now I know where it goes that it doesn't actually delete so oh, where was I hang on I have bags all over the place. I was literally a, a grown up, grown woman about to cry. So, where was I? I was talking about um, the last of the bags. The fabric that I bought for my niece to make her, I believe it was a bag for her birthday or Christmas. Anyway, um, so I have four of these. No, four. I can't even count. I have six of these. Um, three of them with a gray zipper three of them with the purple zipper. The gray zippers though, one has the purple um, sparkly insides and two of them have this gray and white chevron insides. Have to do with the fabric that I had. And then the other three that have the purple zipper, they all have sparkly lining. Oh my god. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> so happy I didn't have to re-record. <laughs> Oh, all right. Where are the others? I don't know what I did with it. Oh, hold on. What did I do with it? Oh, right in front of me. Okay, the last, which is actually what I was showing you when it poof. Um, or when it blinked for me. It actually stopped earlier recording, but the camera actually blinked somewhere else. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, scrap bags. I was saying that scrap bags... Um, will cost more because they take like three times as long to make with the regular fabric you cut you interface you you know you put everything together with the scrap bags you actually have to make the fabric so um, I have I have five of varying sizes actually they kind of look like that varying sizes they all have this material for the back different handles on all of them some of the handles actually, all of the handles were like handles I had prepped from scrap fabric long before. Um, I believe they all have the same back fabric um, as a pocket inside. And most of them, not all of them, have this as the lining. So the first one is about the size of the, yep, the Notions pouch. Um, so the back and then the front is like that. Two of them are not embroidered, are, uh, what's the word? Oh my gosh. Um, I guess embroidered, I'm not sure what the word is, but decorated. Stitch decoration on the top of two of them. So these are all fabrics that I've used in the past. So that's that. Um, so that's that one. And it has a lovely um, teal. Probably not showing up. The zipper. I love that color. Love that teal color. Um, the next one. It's a little bigger. And vertical. Vertical scraps. This. I always remember this. I bought this when my nieces were tiny. And I made, um, not even my nieces, my first niece when she was tiny. Um, 
to make her body pillow. She probably was like two or three years old when I bought it and she's now uh, 19. <laughs> so this fabric's been here a long time. Um, so yeah, there's that one. And the inside is just white with um, those pineapples in there. Sporadic pineapples on it. And like I said, all of them have the pocket with the back fabric. And the handle, white zipper. Next one again, it's a little bigger than the last. This one doesn't have any of the decorative stitching on top, but again, all familiar fabrics, or familiar to me anyway. And the inside is the pineapple. So, and it's white with some gold pineapples on it. This one's a little bigger than the last, slightly. Again, a combination of, you know, blocks. These are like the, the box bottoms that I cut out and then just some strips. This was a one-off bag from um, last year. There's cats on there. Somebody sent this to me, I think. I forget who it was. Someone sent me that fabric. I want to say it was, I think it was Debbie who sent me. But that and also has the pineapple. And then the last one, which is the mammoth one, um, I was just putting all the long strips that I had. I was trying to use them up and put them together. So um, some of them, it's like the, the fall Halloween fabric that I did and just random. The kitty again. And then this is the Halloween fabric right there. There's some Halloween fabric right there and there. So yeah, and then the back. This one's big. I did not measure this, but I want to say this was like 14 or 15 inches wide by uh, 10 or 11 inches long, if I remember when I was cutting it. So basically I sewed all the scraps together and then I straightened it up. Ooh, major avalanche. Oops. So yeah, that's the big one. And the inside was, I think, yep, yeah, well, it looks like maybe all but one of them have the uh, pineapple, the white fabric. So, so yeah, tomorrow I need to take photos so that I have them while I'm in Boston to edit and at least set up Etsy for the listing. So, um, I feel semi-accomplished this week that I got some things done. Um, before I leave tomorrow, I just have to spend some time cleaning up some of my mess and putting this video together. Oh my God, I'm so, I was so livid. I was so livid when the camera blinked. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, so um, once again, the bags will be listed next Thursday or Friday, most likely next Friday. Um, I'm not holding anything, uh, so don't request, please, because I'm going to have to say no. Um, and the uh, Octo Party Cal. If you guys are interested, I would love for you to join me. Go crazy, go wild, use whatever yarn, embroider eyes, use safety eyes, um, put lashes like Angie did. Um, yeah, my first Cal. Uh, hopefully, I will have more on that tomorrow or, or Sunday. Um, I'm hoping to post something tomorrow. But um, either through the hashtag on Instagram or through my Facebook page. The link is down below. Um, Christy, again, let me know where you want that mailed. Um, most likely, I won't get it in the mail till I come back next week, unfortunately, because I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, yeah. Okay. Now it's really going to be over an hour. Oh, my God. I'm st <sighs> so livid. Did I mention that yet? I was so livid. Okay, on that note, and I don't even have wine here to go calm myself, but we're testing out the new Instant Pot air fryer, so okay, I will talk to you guys later.